Welcome to the Dusty Futon Musicians Podcast. The Dusty Futon is revolutionizing the music industry one artist at a time. Every episode of the Dusty Futon features an independent and original artist from the San Diego area. Our hosts and co-hosts create a conversation around the artist and their music while making it a point to allow them to tell their story their way. We don't have any advertisers or sponsors, so anything goes. This is a chance for the artist to just talk to you, the fans, about why they do what they do, what they go through, and how they do this thing we call music. We don't charge the artists for this service. We want it to remain completely free for the artists who need it and the fans that want to find them. That's why we set up a Patreon page where your donation can get you behind the scenes access to audio, video, and photos, and even get you direct access to the artists. Go to patreon.com slash the dusty futon for more information. Help us revolutionize the music industry, one artist at a time. Christopher Sluka is an experimental artist who just can't stop doing, not just with music, but life in general. This outrageous and outspoken man humbly tells us how hard he works and downplays his tenacity towards getting the project done. He brought along Anna, his new bassist, whom he met at his flight school. She's an accomplished artist and pilot in her own right. Let's take a listen and enjoy something different and tasty to the ears. I'm one of those weird people that wants to be a tree when I die. Oh, a tree? Do you yeah. know they can do that thing for you? They can yeah, make you a yeah, tree or whatever? yeah. They, they like cremate you and they basically fertilize the soil. Hey, Tyler. And, you and then you're a tree. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm just. The These guys have been stuff. talking, <laughs> bantering back and forth like the entire day to where we barely get any fucking content. No, that is <laughs> not true. I never see Kim. We never get to I talk know. anymore. <laughs> he doesn't come home at night. I don't know. <laughs> what is going on here? I'm lost. <laughs> so I think it's about time maybe we get to at least a little bit of a point here. We've got Chris Sluka in house with us today. Hello. Chris. Thank you for coming out here, driving. I hope you didn't have to drive too far. It was a trek, man. It just was so long. It had to be what? At least twenty minutes. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> did you fly your Cessna here? <laughs> no, I did not fly the Cessna. How did you know about my Cessna? <laughs> Are we talking about my Cessna? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, boy. The Cessna. Yeah. You it's want me to give you the call letters? Uh, personal here. Oh, you right research, <laughs> I think. <laughs> well, well, my mom is also a pilot. She's a flight uh, instructor, too, which I found out that you are. Yes. Um, we'll go into a little bit more about that later on. But first, let's start with you uh, personally, Chris Sluka. That's right. And you are a, uh, a, a singer-songwriter. You do vocals, guitar, keys, drums, violin. Um, you write wow. a lot of rock and experimental music. That's it. Mic drop. We're done. <laughs> right? I guess that's an episode. Let's call it. <laughs> it's Here a wrap, people. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. What happened? I missed by. something. No. It's, it's not Wait, as impressive as it too. sounds. <laughs> <laughs> It's much more impressive. <laughs> well, you got to watch the movie. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. And, no, then, it, and then read it, the book and see which one's better. It's more out of necessity. I'm one of those obsessive people that gets a song in your head. You know, like when you have a song in your head and it's somebody else's, you hear it on the radio and it mm -hmm. just drives you nuts. Absolutely. Well, that's how I come up with ideas. If a song <laughs> appears in my head. I can't get it out. It's driving me crazy. And so whether it's two or three in the morning, I got to get it down on, on the recording. And I so, notice. I so notice. Oftentimes I I'll just grab a guitar or whatever it is or violin and i'll start making noise with it to get the sound that i need or anything i mean you you literally have a, pretty much everything at your disposal at least in some of the pictures that i saw when i was doing yeah. some research it looks like you basically live in a proverbial toy store of musicians yes or uh, musical of instruments music. rather yeah. um and so you have everything at your disposal and i was watching a few little tidbits of you obsessively cranking away <laughs> yes. at at an album yeah. to where where even the person who was trying to say he's like yeah let's work on this video i'm ready you went in and nonstop, no sleep, 12 pots of coffee later came out with pretty much an album. And yeah. he was just like, I haven't even finished like pulling up my pants yet. Do you like <laughs> I, I didn't even put shoes on yet? And you're already done with this album. You're referring to the director, Eric Bishop. Great yes. guy. And the previous album, he did 13 videos for the 13 songs. And wow. we just finished wow. doing that. And we put it out for a Christmas Blu-ray type sales type thing. So like you don't even release a CD, it's a DVD. Yeah. And wow. And who did you bring with us with you today? This is Anna. 
Hello, Anna. Hi. Hi, Anna. Anna is the latest addition to the band. She joined the band in October. Was it October? Yeah, that's right. And you play bass? I do. You do. I was going to say, you have the length of a bass player. (laughs) (laughs) She's She's very tall. (laughs) (laughs) Bass player length, yeah. Absolutely. That's why she got the role. I mean, she got the job because she just looks like a bass player. Right. It's like the rest of you guys, you're good, but you're too short. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. We have criteria, you know. Uh, Yeah. Tyler's Um, also a bass player. Well, I, I, I started Sorry, I out as a bass sure player, blah, 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 here, talk about me. I went back to guitar uh, because we needed one. We couldn't have two bass players in a band. That's true. And, and also, so. but I'm going Spinal back. Spinal tap again, remember? <laughs> Wait, you're in a band? <laughs> <laughs> let's not talk about that. All right, so let's talk about the band that we have in front of us. Exactly. So you've obviously, you've been at this for a little while. Yeah. You've been doing this since the 80s. Yeah, which is how long awesome. I've been doing this, like life, <laughs> being born. Um, that's no <laughs> way to make our guests feel nothing, comfortable. No, I'm just saying that's it's nothing short of miraculous. It's a long time. Yeah. It definitely shows how much passion that you have for your craft. No, <laughs> <laughs> wrong. No, not at all. No, no I got to pay bills. Most musicians they do it because they have to. Whether or not yeah. they're successful at it doesn't really matter. You it's just, you, all it's yeah, terminal. You do it you'll and die I told you, it. I'm just an obsessive maniac. I have to do this. Whether it's a theme. It's I get a theme. paid for it or not. I just happen to get really, really lucky. <laughs> Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> works out that way. Um, but you've been going strong since the '80s. Um, your first album came out in '89. Called um, what was it? Emotional Battlefield. Yeah, is what it was called. Mm-hmm. Um, What's that one about? I mean, let's start with just the name of the album, Emotional Battlefield. All the albums, everything I do, I'm always interested in that yin and yang, the back and forth between men and women and our parents and relationships and how we're all alienated and how we're all trying to make sense of this crazy world. Kind of like we were just talking about before with the last election. I just find that fascinating. And I also look at it almost like an alien myself when I look at our species <laughs> and what we're doing and we're just making all these noises. Like right now, we're just making a bunch of noises <laughs> just are. like other animals. They right, go around yeah. snorting and doing whatever and, <laughs> and they think it's all important and that's what we think too. We just think what we're doing is just really, really important. And uh, like I said before, I just do this because I feel I have to. And fortunately, some people, they find it they get sustenance out of it, I guess. It resonates with them. So what lit that fire underneath you that really compelled you to move Always had this? it. Ever yeah. since I was a kid, I, I remember... Something that you're born with? Like, I guess. I don't know. But we all have that. We all love music, right? And we all yeah. get into it in different ways. Some of us... I, when I hear people say, like, oh, I can't sing. Everybody can sing. It's just some <laughs> people sound better than others. Yeah, look right? at Bob Dylan. I mean, <laughs> God's sake. We could go on. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There are a lot of people that love Bob Dylan, and they always talk about his lyrics, but that voice, I just, you know, <laughs> it just grates on me. Sorry, Bob. I, mean, I respect you. You'll have a hell of a lot more sex, success than I will and sex. I, did, that, I, <laughs> I can really appreciate that so many bands cover his songs because they're so good, and then you know, it's right. not a little. Well, I mean, right. as far as the writing goes, I can't argue with that. Uh, he's, he's a not. great songwriter. The lyrics and everything, it, it, oh, yeah. it really, it, it does something that nobody else did at the time, but I hear him and I'm just like, oh God, yeah. like you sound like Elmer fucking Fudd. <laughs> I just have to turn it off. It's yeah. just really, really great song. And we all have that, right? We all have uh-huh. music, musicians and bands that we all love and other people are like, I can't stand yeah. that, get that off. Right. Somebody in our band just can't stand the Beach Boys. Whenever it comes on the radio, the whatever, she's like, I get that sh- off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I bleep myself. You did yeah. bleep yourself, <laughs> and you know. <laughs> it's not enough. That's a class act. Just need well, to talk you're obviously a class act. I mean, you showed up in a suit. You're making us feel very young. underdressed. Well, you told day. me it was casual. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to see you on a formal day. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Walking in there with like great. like shoulder like regalia and and you know freaking crowd. I don't I don't do well with the whole casual thing. No. I don't know why. Yeah, I just just don't really relax. I, I know, I know a do I, like that, Anna? Right? I'm no, not somebody who no. relaxes. You're either in your flight. So this is like what you're wearing when you go out to the mailbox and like you're just grabbing the post and yeah. And this is how I am when I fly airplanes. <laughs> I will say this: this is the only thing I wear. It's the only thing I have, and I never wash it. So it's a good thing you're <laughs> sitting way over there. Right? That's why it's black. It never gets dirty. It just keeps getting cleaner. Mm-hmm. I was wondering what that <laughs> It just keeps getting better and better. That's right. <laughs> it's like a fine wine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not old. It's vintage. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Always. 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 So, Anna, how did you get uh, caught up in this craziness? How? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Human trafficking. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Traffic in the sky. Um, I uh, I met Chris, Chris at the flight school. Oh, really? 
working on some getting high with Chris. Yeah, kind yeah. of. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, then he, uh, I guess, in October asked me to be a roadie. No, that was back <laughs> right? in um, was it uh, July it was or whatever? Really? Yeah, and she, earlier she <laughs> had asked Time me flies. about, do you know anyone who could fix upright bases? <laughs> and I've known her now. She'd been in, at first as a student and then a flight instructor at the flight school. And I had no idea you were a musician. And I'm like, yeah, all right, yeah. And gave her some information about Even upright bass. So I'm thinking jazz or classical bass uh-huh. player. And then we needed a roadie, and she kind of filled in and helped out. And so she's around the band. As we all did a bunch of tours lately and had a lot of fun. And uh, the previous bass player had some back issues and had to bow out because mm. we were just playing yeah. too much. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and it's just like, I can play rock. <laughs> <laughs> I can rock and or roll. And I said, like, <laughs> can you play my stuff? Because it's so intricate and, and everything. She's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and she showed up. We had an audition. Total confidence. That we had an audition. Right. She just blew right through all 10 songs of the current set. And, you know, I got That's on my knees say. and wow. bowed down. Yeah. <laughs> so I did, right? Didn't know you who you were dealing you with. You did. See? Yeah. So then where did you come from as a, as a musician? How did you start? And do you have training? I uh, just kind of like him played a bunch of different things started out with trumpet when i was in high school uh-huh. yes i'm a trumpet player awesome. all right fifth <laughs> and grade a, bass player. a little less nice. advanced but uh, yes um, played trumpet for a while and then in college you can't really play trumpet in the dorm rooms yeah no, so i like be... found my brother's bass guitar in the basement and just started playing it without an amp and then got into upright bass and so took it from cool. there that's so awesome cool. so that's awesome. yeah I can't even hear a bass guitar without an amp. How the hell do you learn how to play bass? <laughs> you feel it. Wow. Uh-huh. Yeah. Feel feel the That's a musician, right? So did you play in anything before? I Here and there. Um, like you, punk bands or something? No, or just, where did you, where I, did you just get your random start? Random stuff, yeah. whatever came around. I have symphonies with the upright bass and then some, uh, some rock, pop kind of stuff and then this folk rock kind of thing. Cool. And yeah, whatever came up, whatever... I, you know, sounded good to me. And then the universe and happened, then, and you guys and met. Then, and, and, yeah, um, you have to be a pilot to be in this band. So everybody <laughs> in the band Pretty is much. a pilot. Yeah. Really? So. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> a pilot. So we, our our little dream is to go fly off on tour with four separate airplanes. Well, should, should, yeah, you can all fly your own planes. <laughs> Convoy. You yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Should we rise to the occasion then oh, and play some I songs? Think, I think we've been talking enough about Segway. his music. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> do you, let's do it. Um, let's play Rise. Well, <laughs> I think in our normal fashion now, we should let Chris pick what he wants. But I just had a play on words. It doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get your segue this time. No, we can, do, we, can do, we can do Rise. It's okay. the third song on the track. And here's the deal. I was just talking about the last election. Yeah. So most people probably won't be able to pick out the lyrics right now. But what I'm doing in there is I'm actually playing both types of people mm. the oh. people that were for and the people that were against and ah. alternate between the two so you'll hear little oh, I lines like here and there and, and they'll be like wait what, what? <laughs> <laughs> I like that that's good I love the church organ it's very yeah. hymnal Heavy bass, too. I love it. Picking up a little Anna there. Is that breathing in the background? Yeah. Okay.
there's a lot going on in this song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it though. It's so obscure. Uh-huh. Did I hear a record scratch? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh huh. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> what the? Just waiting for the theremin to kick in somewhere. <laughs> I'm a runner, and the breathing is, I recorded it after I got back from a long run. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you literally sweat music. Yes. He <laughs> goes running, is like, how can I turn this into a song? <laughs> to this song. <laughs> there you have it. That was so much fun. Yeah, it is fun. I'm just trying to picture like what kind of people show up to a Sluka crowd. <laughs> Most don't know this from a- a- anything from, right? They were on a bill with somebody else. And uh, so the idea for me anyway is to always find a way for someone who doesn't know your stuff to find to access it. Yeah. Uh-huh. So like on a song like this, it's the groove. Yeah, right. I'm just like kind of groove to it. It's a very walking. Yeah, baseline. I could smoke a joint yeah. to that. You yeah. could, you could do that <laughs> if you're so inclined. But um, well, a lot of people who listen to this are inclined to do just about anything. I so. Think yeah. so. It's a musician's <laughs> podcast. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so rise. So what did that come from? You're talking pretty much kind of like it's a little bit influenced by the, uh, you the know, political, political parties and the the one side versus the other. There's the extreme ones, extreme sides in there too. Like I have. Each line is like a different person. Like mm-hmm. I have one that says like your flag is dumb. <laughs> and another one is like you immigrant scum. Uh, yeah. You know? yeah. And you're uh, goddamn wrong because everyone's doing that, yeah. pointing fingers. And yep. Yep. It doesn't matter what side of it you're on. Right. It's just everybody's. Just yeah. No one's ready to pull their punches yeah. yet. They're and I don't see any solutions coming from that kind of behavior. No. No. We're never gonna get anywhere no. like that. So what album was that off of? That's the latest album. That's the latest. This Col- is off of Colorful Radiation. Yes. Awesome. Nice. And again, there's that. Oh, that's great. There's that dichotomy thing of. Colorful, uh, which is uh-huh. really pretty. I love that you use that word. It's and then the radiation. Yeah, very much. And I love Colorful the painting. Radiation. Now, also, I yes. don't think a lot of people know this about you, unless they've been to your website and read the bio, but you all, you also do your own painting. Yeah. And this, I'm guessing, is one of your own. Yeah. Perhaps a self-portrait. Mm-hmm. Is this yeah, you in college? That's like me back in the after dorm? I just woke up and saw a spider. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not a fan no. of the arachnid yeah. no. or, uh, or you could say no. I just put my hands into a vat of boiling oil. Uh, right? That, yeah. That's a problem. I no, was I was wondering. I was like, eh, yawn. Not- I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's like just waking up and going, I'm still alive! <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's what I do on a date. That's the face I make, yeah, pretty yeah, much, yeah. you know. And then yeah. I look over at Allie and I see her face, and then all is right again in the world. So. Nice <laughs> <laughs> and I also really love the fact that you still use the vinyl format. Yes. I'm love. I'm somebody who, in you know, being born in the late '80s or, or mid '80s, I still listen to a lot of vinyl. I remember putting on. I mean, until it wore it down. Yeah. Like they skipped. Right. There, there's nothing. Yeah. There's no right. record left after how many times <laughs> I played them. So this right here, it's great. It's like, you don't understand. The music is there. You can't even well, see you, it. You like, I always like, you know, looking at the artwork uh-huh. and it, just Reading. having something. Really yeah, that's nice too. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like looking uh, at my artwork. Exactly. No. It's just Let's, so great. <laughs> There's some more of your artwork that looks on the back. Did you paint that little girl too? Yes. So that was the previous album. That was the cover for that one. Oh. Nice. So uh, I like to have little symbols and touching yeah. upon different yeah. things. Yeah, that's neat. So you've had a lot of artwork that you've done, and I, I, I hear that it's been featured pretty much all over the place. Yeah. Some of your stuff in New York. Yeah. 
Did you go like like MoMA or like Guggenheim or just like on the I'm street right there or, next yeah. to Da Vinci. Yes, and, yeah. I, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I just small shows in different cities. Still, that's fun. Anytime yeah. in New York is yeah. fun. Um, and you also got to take it international. Mm-hmm. You went to Tokyo, took some of your artwork there, and uh, yeah, also yeah. your music. Yes. So you mentioned like the first album yeah. that I was. I got. Most of my, uh, uh, how do you say, musical upbringing, if you will, mm-hmm. will, is in New York, playing CBGB and all these other places oh, there. Oh, no. yum. And, uh, <laughs> but it was going nowhere. <laughs> and all the, the major labels were interested in the band. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, but it was just year after year, just nothing really happening, because I guess we sucked. I don't know. <laughs> but at, well, New York's a big bucket of water yeah. to, to be into. You and know? at that time, the right. Japanese were, their economy was just booming, and some executives came to one of the show, and uh, they were from a, a label called Meldak, which is part of Mitsubishi, a mm-hmm. big corporation. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, so that's where the transition from Meldak to Mitsubishi came. Yes. Okay, okay. And then they said, you want to come to Japan? You can record there. They gave me a two-album deal and paid me a lot of money, which was nice. Hey. <laughs> Total artistic freedom. How much yin? Wow. Uh, yen. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> or yang. Yeah. But, <laughs> and uh, that was a great experience. There was just one condition. I had to change the name of the band. So the name of the band was called Fear of Ordinary Life. And back oh. then, there were a lot of bands like that, orchestral maneuvers yeah. in the dark, these long names, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. And they said for the Japanese market, that's just not going to work for them. And so they always liked my last name. In fact, they would giggle every time they'd say it because they'd say Suruka. Yeah, <laughs> and Noels. Yeah, and they would giggle because that's actually a pickup line. You know, that's what you say to a girl in a bar or something if you want to go home and do it. It just literally what? means that's let's, what they, let's do it. Uh, you so, just taught me. That's uh, yeah. All you got to know yeah. is my last name, and you're gold. Me and Ali are out of the bar. I'm just gonna go Suruka, <laughs> exactly. and you get slapped She's in gonna the go, face. She's gonna go Yeah. 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 So they thought that was kind of cool. And so I didn't, That's it wasn't my story. choice, but it was something I had to. Isn't it funny how to. the universe rhymes like that, though? You know? Yeah, <laughs> it's like, I, this I is know, my right? last name. I didn't choose it, yet I come here and it's a pickup line. I love this country. Right? Yeah. yeah. It was, anyway. it was all the stars of her alignment there. So it's also a bird. It's Czech. I, I, my, my family name is Czech, and oh. it's a bird in the Czech Republic, and I oh. think that's kind of cool since I think so. I, cool. I'm a bird guy. And you're fl- By yeah, the you're way, flying. she's a real flyer. She I, hang glides. Really? Yeah. What? Yeah, she throws herself off of mountains. Oh my so you're word. like always All you need to do, to do is fight crime and you're a superhero. I know, right? <laughs> I she think is so. a superhero. I, think so. I thought I saw her cape. I don't know. I just have to be up in the air yeah. or playing music. <laughs> Right yeah. Isn't that oh, great? Mean, I just have to be up in the air. That's such a cool thing, yeah. though. That's you a guys great line. Line. One day we um, might play oh, music in the air. I promised I was going to come oh, back and touch okay. on this. Speaking that you fly, you're also a flight instructor. In fact, you are the, the owner and you run uh, Learn to Fly San Diego. Yes. Yes. This is something... Nice plug, by the way. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> um, what was the name of that again? <laughs> Learn to Fly <laughs> What's San <website>? Diego. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's something I've seen like on little brochures and things scattered all over the place. And, and you know, it's so funny that these things all come around yeah. full circle. And now you're here sitting right in front of me uh, for a completely different reason. I didn't even know that. <laughs> flying. Like, yeah. I didn't even. I'm, I'm floored. I didn't so, even know that. So I've always been fascinated with flight, like Anna. Mm-hmm. And as I, like I said, I got very lucky in the music business. Uh-huh. And one thing that I should not have done that I did was... Buy airplanes. Oh. <laughs> I should have invested in the stock market like normal people do. But they don't instead, appreciate like houses. I wanted to learn how to fly, and then I d- it was always like, "What's next?" Yeah. Oh, okay, you get this. You can become a private pilot, then uh-huh. an instrument rating, and on and on. Uh-huh. Next thing, commercial pilot. Okay, what's next? Uh, and then flight instructor, and then buying airplanes. And one is never enough. And then you have a fleet, <laughs> and you have a school, and you say to yourself, "How did I get here? How, did, how do I work this?" And this so is not like, my beautiful wife. Exactly. This is not, not my, my beautiful, beautiful house. house. Exactly. This is not my gigantic suit. And San no Diego is the most beautiful place on the planet for yeah. me. I've been yes. all over, mm-hmm. and I'd keep coming back here all year round. And it's so great for mm-hmm. flying. You've got the mountains, you got the desert, you got the ocean choices. The, yeah, yeah, it's just mm-hmm. so beautiful. Wide variety there. And if you're going to learn to fly, this is the place to do it. Oh, absolutely. It's fair weather. You don't got to worry about storms or anything. Yeah. Visibility, yeah. you know. And I'm kind of a dark, gloomy person. Well, I don't think so. Well, not gloomy, but I'm just kind of dark person. I always lived in dark, rainy places, too, like (laughs) New York and London and Milan and Tokyo. And it's always raining and gray. Uh Sorry, I like those cities. I do. I do. I'm I'm a big fan of Seattle. (laughs) I I love the rain. I love Seattle. I'm with you there. Yeah, we actually just came back from New York. We had some meetings there, and uh, it was 11 degrees. 
Oh shit! Fuck that! <laughs> no, uh-uh. <laughs> I'm sitting here like 50 de- 50 degrees here. I'm like that's San Diego cold. I have my New York jacket on. And for <laughs> our foreign <laughs> listeners, yeah. right? for our foreign listeners, that's uh, Fahrenheit, <laughs> yes. not Celsius. Because <laughs> uh, the foreigners would be like, "What? That's not bad." Yeah, right? I, that's easy. <laughs> so you've been all over. You've taken your music everywhere. What was your favorite place to be? Here. Think. Yeah, America's finest. <laughs> right. right here in San Diego. Ah, really? Uh, yeah. It is. Oh, and only just now is, are San Diegans starting to realize what this music is because it was always, it's kind of like on autopilot. And mm-hmm. um, ah, nice I, one. on my, th- uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> my third album, I was picked up by Time Warner, uh-huh. and that did really, really well over in Europe. And that's what really got me going with yes. money to do stuff. Uh-huh. And then I relocated over here in San Diego. So I'm not from here. I got it's like my adopted hometown, really. And that afforded me that luxury to do all this stuff. And But I never had played here in San Diego, other than I had a couple coffee houses down at the beach. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'd play there and do acoustic versions of my yeah. songs. But overseas, they would just keep selling. And, and, and I did just keep, then I started putting out albums on my own label. There you go. I can't wait to hear what an acoustic version of that last song sounded like. <laughs> that would be something, huh? That would be a little bit of a different side of the spectrum. <laughs> All I do is just breathe. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing he's in San Diego. He can that go for a run stupid. any day, any time of the right? day. Right? He can come back and record it and be like, all right, it's a new song. Right? <laughs> 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 He's got a gig. Make that your first one. So that's that how I write. Yeah. Run just whatever run. I'm doing. That, run, to, run to the gig. That's right. a that's a good artist for you. You figure <laughs> yeah. out what whatever you're doing, you turn it into your art form. That's a song. That's a yeah. song. I'm driving. Oh, There's I heard that bottle break. That's a song. That's a song. So your your music seems to be also very visual. Even in yes. your shows, you're very dramatic yes. with your things. And you, like you said, this last album was basically a DVD. Everything's got a music video. The last on two it. albums are all. All videos. So and how do you even start to create something like that? I mean, I have a hard enough time just writing a song. I, I never sit down and do anything like that. People, are, you know, we say write a song. Uh-huh. It sounds yeah. like you sit down and you're writing. Yeah. No, it's, it's not like that for me anyway. I mean, I just a, picture a you writing like, aspect to it. I always like with Rise, it has that groove, right? right? <clears throat> There's a little groove that we have, and then it's a matter of okay, what am I going to do with this to make it interesting? Not just for other people, for myself, right? Because I know that I'm going to be. Well, it's all about you. Song. Yeah. It is always all about. <laughs> of me. course, your name. All I care about is me. <laughs> yes, Luca. <laughs> Anna just, just is only in the band show. because she cares about me. Yeah, I, of course. You think I care about her? <laughs> I can see that from the look on her face. It tells yeah. me everything. Total indifference from her side. She's yeah, like, mm. she's looking at her watch. She's. Like, <laughs> <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have a watch. Like, How did I get back into this? Yeah, right. uh, <laughs> but let's hear another song. Yeah. Yeah, let's do yeah, that. Yeah. Yes. What are we listening to now? Uh, let's do, um, how about number one? Number one. Yes. Oh, here we Which go. Which is uh, appropriately one. the first track on the latest album. It yes. is the number one track. Well, I was thinking maybe we should have played that first. <laughs> no. no we're That's not it. how we, we do gotta it. we got to mix it up. Okay. That would make too much sense. Here. Yeah, we're going to play number one, number two. Yeah. <laughs> Take the sun. Is that you on the ukulele? God's yeah. On our side, we're number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. We make the sunshine. And we 
Like you've got a lot of pent up aggression. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Awesome. Both songs have screaming just like in the background. Yeah, yeah, I like to scream. Um, when you yeah. wrote this song, yeah. what part of was it only that lyric that you started it was the with? The intro with the ukulele. That's what you uh-huh. started. So with. I, yeah. I wanted to get a ukulele. Every now and then, I have like a desire to pick up a new instrument. So I was like, let me get a ukulele and let me see if I can do something with it chord wise that I haven't heard other people do. And that's the song. It's just that that part, and it just keeps repeating with some other with little breakdown sections and it's random cool. screaming and random <laughs> yeah. screaming because not frustration. I'm all about random screaming and heavy breathing <laughs> <laughs> and flowing juices. So just like my sex life, <laughs> yeah, right. It's like you should have been in porn or heavy something. Heavy breathing, random yeah. screaming. Uh, yeah. Who said I wasn't? <laughs> oh, he does everything else. <laughs> hey now, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> Breaking down walls and not just music. Oh. Um, so anyway, no, but but really, uh, everything that I heard in that uh, song was extremely unconventional. Uh-huh. And I think you probably take that a little bit as a compliment because... I don't want to be bored. Do of you? course. Right. Nobody wants to be bored. No. And nobody wants to do the same thing. But no. it's still accessible. I yeah. mean, it's not the greatest drums and bass or whatever. <laughs> so for those of you that are uh, shots fired, shots fired. <laughs> Chris looked directly over at Adam. When he said that, <laughs> it's but joke. it's great. And I mean, the fact that he looked going, over, he looked over yeah. at her more as he. I just said that. What's her respect? <laughs> <laughs> what did she think he about that? It. He knew uh, what he was I saying. I saw that she played your guitar with a sword. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, that's a, an unconventional plectrum. Well, if I were it's to kind say of like so. a, you know what a steel guitar is, where you have yeah. you know, make that sense. Instead of using like a regular steel, why not use a sword? <laughs> and wow. again, it's, it's the symbolism. On your it's the symbolism uh-huh. too. It's that the double-edged sword, right. the two sides of everything. Uh, it's a tool, mm-hmm. but it's also a weapon. So, Boy, yeah. I didn't come prepared All enough. Kinds of <laughs> 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 All kinds you of came prepared well enough. You're setting him up to tell you the story. <laughs> exactly. That's great, right? And that's perfect because I'm learning just as we're trying to help everybody else learn about uh, Chris Luca and his message. But I, his. I can't really bring the sword to the shows. Oh. So I guess they find it, you know, well, it's because you're not in, you're, you're not <laughs> yeah. in Arizona. Well, you're in California. Those, <laughs> and the plastic swords don't have the same tone. You know? <laughs> right. It doesn't. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't really work. <laughs> Won't do the song justice. You know? <laughs> but it's still really cool to see. And if you want to check out the video, it's actually there up on his website at sluka.com. S L U K A. The video is called through the downside up and it's a lot of fun. That's the, uh, documentary. Oh, it's a documentary. That's yes. a documentary that, uh, Eric did as we, cause we got that hit song. And so he thought we should put something out out there so people can find out a little exactly. bit more about us. Kim, yes. you're, you're holding the DVD of his latest it's album. It's a Blu-ray, yes. God damn it! <laughs> it's, it is a Blu-ray. Yeah, you're holding the Blu-ray oh, of yeah. his latest album, which we also have this for. Yeah, an so, actual album album. Like that's, that's, that's what Tyler was saying earlier, is that he actually has DVDs of his album. Sorry, Blu-rays of Blu-ray. his album. <laughs> album. <laughs> well, which is awesome. and again, the whole album was conceived, like I said, in my head, but it wasn't just song by song. It was the whole thing from start to finish. Like a movie. Yeah, and that's and, how this plays as a movie there's no ending from one song to the next it goes visually and musically into the next song wow it's kind of like chapters in a book that's how i think of it so that i think think the concept album really needs to come back you know the the, the Uh days that's a perfect way to do it is Uh to now from 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 inception to completion how long would you say it took you to create and generate and finish this whole idea three months it was really strange it was three weeks (laughs) to uh get the ideas together and then Three weeks to practice and record the album. Wow. You were pretty close, Tyler. And then mastered it. and then close. Then okay. No, I mean, the, the mastering and mixing and then shooting the video and all that stuff. Like, that's what I mean. Like, the whole process. The videos came afterwards. Oh, okay. So first, we had the album released, and we did the first video, number one, before uh-huh. the album was released. Okay. I just love that part in the video where 
you come back and you're like, okay, we're ready. We got it all done. And he goes, okay, well, when's it going to be mastered? And you're like, no, it's, it's done, <laughs> it's done, done, done. Wow. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, that wow. was funny. You're a monster. <laughs> That was really cool. Um, that's fun to watch. So well, but it, let me talk about that for a second. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just about to start recording the album, and I had a meeting with Eric. Over, we had lunch, and we were talking to him, because what I was thinking was we had just done the previous album called Introversions, and that was also a kind of visual album. Yes. And I was saying what I wanted to know what we could possibly do, and I'm a big fan of 3D. Ooh, me too. And... and I said, can we shoot this in 3D? Because that's the ideas I was having visually for this new album. Yeah. Because like, like I said, it's all, it all happens at the same time, yeah. the music and the visuals and all that. And he says, well, I don't know anything about it, but I can look into it. And he has friends. He has friends mm -hmm. that worked on like Avatar and all these other big 3D things. Wow. And so he was going to research all that. But then three weeks later, I call him up and tell him the album's done and I'm ready to start shooting. And he hadn't even really looked into the 3D thing. And, uh, well, I think we're going to do a third song, right? Yeah, uh, soon. The song is, we're going to do is called Virga, and we went out to the desert to shoot it in uh, two of our airplanes. And we had to bring all this 3D equipment, and it was 115 degrees oh. out there in the middle of the summer. And it was so hot. A little bit warm. And we had to bring all this rig. Because usually you just have a small camera, or even like yeah. a GoPro or yeah. something like that. But we had to have all this 3D gear out oh there. Oh, man. And it made it a real Ooh. challenge to shoot the thing. But we did it. Unfortunately, awesome. no one's really... It must really be uh, a perk to have your own planes for those aerial shots. Yeah, no you know? <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. I know. I and to get around. My know? life just really sucks. Uh, it really sucks. It's a tough life. It's, it's tough. Yeah. Let's kill the episode I would, hate, I, I would hate myself. I would hate me if I'm listening to this. So I, I, I apologize. Yes, thank you. Well, yes, it's no. not about yes, hating. Thank you. It's about she hates me. So it's, it's about yeah, striving. Deal with this all. Like, yeah. it's, it's a lot. I, I am masochistic yeah. and she's sadistic. So it kind of works out. But see, yin and yang. Here's I'm like a Stockholm syndrome kind of thing. with Here's the thing, though. You earned it. Like you, Earned you did? Yeah. No. You bust your ass. You and that's the beauty is you're humble about it. Well, but you you work your hardest that you can to get these things done. And you may I'm do just it. desperate not to suck. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's really what it comes down to. I don't want to embarrass my family or anybody. Well, like, hold oh on, hold God. on a second. Can I have that as a band? This yeah. is, this is, <laughs> this is not Chris to suck. <laughs> this is Chris Luca who masters himself on being able to see both sides and, and perspective, but you can't see the side of how awesome you are? Or you just don't want to? I, I know I'm not awesome. None of us are. Well, we all have our special things, right? Yeah. We all have our own little deals. Right. And no matter what you are, you could always be something else. Well, I mean, you, you work hard, right? Would you say that, that you're a hard worker? I'm really lucky that I chose to do things that I'm kind of okay at. Like, can you imagine me, this skinny guy <laughs> wanting to be a football player? <laughs> like, it's not going to happen, right? <laughs> no. Maybe in Canada. Or can you imagine me trying to do rap? Right. That's just going to be hilariously pathetic. <laughs> I, I could never do that. We're awesome. <laughs> Then I have a point. Right, maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe. Awesome. maybe you are awesome. You never know. You never, you never know. know. So he doesn't really work hard because his work is technically play. He loves yes. what he does. He has the passion yes. for that. So it's not really like something that's work for him. It's just, this is what I do. But this you still have to put yeah. the time and energy into it. And that's what you do is you expel yeah, but a lot I'm lucky of, to of you. But it's like breathing to him. We're so, <laughs> right? Right? And we're so lucky to get paid for it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yes. being paid to breathe heavy. <laughs> well, you know, there are people who There's just love people. being in call centers and they get paid to do that <laughs> yeah no is that, no, they probably no. don't it felt like it. he was okay. talking to me at that point <laughs> i don't think they love it and by the way the flying and the music to me they're the exact same thing they both require there's there's a lot of science there's a lot uh -huh. of artistic you artistic. must have been listening Release to music in the 70s <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a lot of discipline and jefferson study, airplane and we got checklists and we have set lists yeah. and yeah. you okay. know it's just all comes huh. from the same place here yeah. comes the million dollar question are you a member of the mile high club <laughs> and the next song we're going to play <laughs> is okay. actually about flying. Hey. <laughs> this next song called so it's called Doing Virga. It three to nine thousand feet in the air. <laughs> this is called Virga. For some people don't know what Virga is, a lot of people do. This is a Jeopardy question, but uh, Virga is rain that falls and then Never evaporates the ground. before it hits the ground. Yes. And I love flying through Virga because many times you know we're getting rain on, uh -huh. you know, or Anna's in her hand glider getting Virga rained on or whatever. And then people on the ground, they're just they're all just dry. No and I just find there's there, something huh? important there. I don't know what it is. There's a metaphor for something there that I can't really quite articulate, huh. but I've made a song out of it.
I noticed you were pronouncing it Virga. Yeah. Because <laughs> wait, Virga show just, off. I thought you were saying, "Dear God." I mean, that's what everybody says, and I, I like that too. Because I, I have a lot of issues with religion, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I know that. And in fact, why am I not surprised? Yeah, and in <laughs> fact, the director Eric Bishop, he's very religious, and he's a born again Christian or Christian, I should just say. And he also thought it was "Dear God." He, he thought I was writing some sort of a religious song. In a way, it's definitely spiritual. Yeah. It was very calming. Like yeah, it was. It it evokes the uh, sense of being suspended, you know, almost as if you're in the air flying. At least that's the sense that I kind of got from it. Oh, you mean he put Virga into music? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I, I heard certain things, you know, like Virga streaming down her cheeks. Were you perhaps maybe talking about your plane symbolically or actually streaming down in sheets. Oh, in sheets. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's all right. I heard that one wrong. I'm, We're all hearing <laughs> it wrong. That's yes. a good lyric too. Dear God, <laughs> I'm streaming down in cheeks. Yeah. Dear God. <laughs> <laughs> that would work. That would work. Have you ever? Okay, this is just a random question, but have you ever heard a song where you swore that was the words for it, and then you say it out loud, and someone goes, "Wait a minute." Yeah. What yes. did you just say? And That's about every wrong. '90s song, <laughs> rocks. Every '90s rock and alternative song. Well, that just came from Pearl grunge. Jam. That came grunge, from grunge yeah. because you can't understand anything. I always, whenever I hear um, um, Eddie Vedder sing, I picture him eating a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I swear I didn't know what any of those songs were about. I just liked the rock beats. That yeah. was it. <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah. how it should uh-huh. be. I think for a lot of music, where you're drawn in by something. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then as you get into it, you start to realize, hey, wait a minute. Is he singing this or is that or what's yeah. that? Or I never noticed there's like a record scratching or some uh-huh. breathing or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. These little things that you pick up on. That's yeah. what makes it fun, right? Yep. Yes. Otherwise, definitely. it just gets played out real fast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, do we still have time for a little acoustic song? Yes. I, 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 Can we do that? Really? Think, yes. We do? Yeah, I think we do. Do we, we want to go right into another song? It's such a cool do song. Any, it's a San Diego. No, no. We were gonna. It's oh, a San, San Diego, Diego Zoo. Zoo. I said oh. that one. Yes. Okay. We have to for that. It's a short song. It's only two and a half minutes. Perfect. I love well, it. I, I, actually, that, since you said that, I got to touch on that. All of your songs are about four minutes that we played, and they went by like that because oh, you fun. just you get absorbed uh-huh. into the song so easily that it just it's done. It keeps yeah. your mind yeah. occupied. There's so many things going on. Yeah. I mean, I you heard you saw me grabbing things out of the air because like <laughs> there's so many things going on. Uh, I felt like the monster from Young Frankenstein. Like, <laughs> well, the last the last song is real simple. It's just piano, drum, bass, and then yeah. a little synth in the background. It's that piano thing that's just going uh-huh. over and over and over again. Yeah, it's getting you, right. you got the sustain going, so there's it's yes. just constantly being filled, and the notes are just being suspended in the air. Uh, I love it. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some other fun stuff that you did in your uh, career. <laughs> like you are also uh, in a couple of independent films uh, <laughs> as both an actor, and apparently you're also a stunt pilot. Yeah. Oh my word. <laughs> so I feel like we've been talking about the wrong stuff this no, whole time. Shit. Well, it is a musician's <laughs> podcast, so I don't know about that. But wait a minute. No, but I want to talk about a little bit about this before we go into the acoustic jam because I do want to do that. Trust me, I'm itching to. Okay. But you were in a few movies. Um, you were in a movie called Beach Bar. Yeah. You were in a movie called La Migra. Yeah. And uh, you were way back in the day before even you released Emotional Battlefield. Um, you were a part of a movie called Vampire's Kiss. Yes. Which starred uh, Nicolas Cage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of right. a big deal. Kind of. That's pretty neat. And Kinda fun like fun story, full circle. Big John and I both also worked with a Coppola. Yes, we did. Yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. yes. His brother, His Mark, brother. was a fellow employee of iHeartMedia when we were both employed there. He's still slaves. employed there. I know, but we weren't. We are not anymore. <laughs> gladly, so it's okay. I don't think he's on KGB anymore, though. No, he does the uh, nights and weekends oh, stuff okay. now. That's yeah, right. They moved right. him around. He's, okay. He tracks anyways. Like, who cares? You could put him anywhere. But either way. <laughs> You're not supposed cool. to say that. I mean, the real map is still out there. <gasps> Jesus. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Let's, go, let's come back. Let's talk about that. I mean, I mean, so you're an actor. Interesting. Uh, which what, what did you act in? Which movie was that? The Vampire's Kiss, or which one? Oh, well, I, were you, did you act in all of these ones that I had just mentioned? Pretty much. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, now in, I want to go ahead and watch these movies. In the early Are they days, on what, what happened was, is in the early days in New York, rather than I, I'm a terrible, I was be terrible as a bartender or a waiter uh-huh. that kind of thing. So you have to make money to pay your rent, right? And <laughs> Having long hair and looking like a musician, rock musician, whatever, in the 80s, I'd get calls to do audition for whatever, where they need somebody, that, that kind of type. Right. And We need the butler for the Rocky Horror Picture <laughs> yeah. Show. We need you here right now. And I actually got called <laughs> to do a Woody Allen film. Didn't get uh-huh. in it, but I got hired for it, and they got me into the Screen Actors Guild. 
And once you're in oh. the Screen Actors Guild, they always have to go for somebody who's in the union. So yeah. I was able to, because of that, I was able to get work like that. That's but awesome. I never sought to be an actor or whatever. I just do my. I'm just a hobby. I'm no method actor. <laughs> <laughs> so, which which one of those films were your stunt pilot in? La Migra. La Migra. Yeah. What um, what role were you? I mean, I'm just kind of curious. I wanted like the vampire. Yeah, well, like the vampire's the, the, kiss. The, oh, in the vampire's kiss. Yeah. What were you in the vampire's kiss? What were you? I'm the guy. I can't say it because it's my my one line and it's just all profanity. Uh, <laughs> you can but say you can. it. There's no yeah, fucking matter. Yeah, we well, all are. Right. Yeah. You can say shit. So he comes. You want. He's convinced he's a vampire. He comes out of this club, and uh-huh. I'm coming out of this limousine as this rock musician or whatever. Okay. And he runs up to me. He goes, "You gotta believe me. I'm a vampire." And I just push him off. You know, I got my entourage, whatever. Right. And I just push him off, and I say, "Get the fuck off me." <laughs> <laughs> That's my big line. You push Nicholas Cage off wow, you. Yes. Nice. That's awesome. You told Nicolas Cage to get the fuck, fuck off, off me. me. You. Yes. Bucket list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that to Nicolas Cage. <laughs> no kidding. Because, fun fact, I'm actually not a huge fan of his. No, no? I'm not I'm not either. a big fan of Nick Cage, although... What? Uh, I Raising like... Arizona, hello. No, that's the exception. Okay. Face Raising off. Arizona is my favorite movie that Face he ever off. did. Face off. Okay. No? No. No. No big deal. But John Travolta no kicked ass. <laughs> Not Nick Cage, though. No. So, <laughs> no, no, it's okay. So I, I have to say that in hours. Vampire's Kiss, my favorite actor is Chris Sluka. I have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Well done. Well done, Tyler. While we're tuning, can we at least give a shout out to the two members that aren't here today with us? No. No, okay. They, that's what they get for not They sharing. couldn't right, make on. it, right, so they, they, we will not mention the names. I just fixed that's it. Right. So let me try it. will just be called again. Drummer and other vocal person. Tyler. Nah. <laughs> the drummer is Anna, uh, Anna go ahead. All right, there we go. Yeah. Lise Viegas, she's the drummer. She's an animal, literally just that's animal right. on drums. Awesome. And then Alex Holt. She sings and plays the street can in a really cool the way. The street can? Yeah, big street can that she has. And so the two of them just go off on this whole rhythmic drum thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is this? Is that this like is literally awesome. like those big steel drums that it's like the homeless people drum. light fires in and stuff? Kind of. Kind of. And Alex is homeless, so it's, it works. <laughs> okay, well, that works. But she's like, I play my house. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So what are we going to hear? So this is uh, San Diego Zoo. Yeah, San Diego's well, well known out. for the world famous zoo, but um, <laughs> the world famous overrated San Diego. Zoo. Yes, <laughs> I don't think they're too happy about this song. I got, a, <laughs> I got contacted by the mayor's office about making it kind of like a San Diego song until they actually listened to the lyrics. <laughs> really? Whoa, the yeah. Faulkner uh, uh, administration <laughs> contacted you. <laughs> we won't say which one. <laughs> Uh, they asked guy. if I could change the lyrics to. It was big, probably big that creep no, filner. No, no. Don't you want to be famous? No. Yeah. No. 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 Mm-hmm. no. No. They said, "Don't you want to be famous?" Yeah. Are you serious? How yeah. pretentious! You said pretentious earlier. Yeah. Like that, that. That's pretentious. Yeah. I love how they say that being uh, Los Angeles's next door neighbor and forgotten, you like, know, stuff f- like yeah. Mayor Faulkner can. Do you want to be famous? famous? It's like, don't you? Guess what? Nobody fucking knows about San Diego except Ron Burgundy. So <laughs> eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Saturday morning when we used to hunt the dinner. And I get my things from a circumcised strip mall and I watch TV for dinner. And I'm flying over San Diego Zoo. Watching those beer cats <laughs> running scared and past me on methamphetamine. <laughs> I could be happy here if I could be a millionaire.
Let me tell you what I think I've got all the answers If you just believe Yeah, trust me Do you need that tan? Put on the sunscreen And be a man Or whatever <laughs> And I'm flying over San Diego Watching those meerkats running scared and past me <laughs> on methamphetamine. <laughs> I could be happy here if I could be a millionaire. Oh, I could be happy here if I could be a millionaire. Bravissimo! <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> what was more fun is when I panned over, I saw three phones oh, same, same. doing the same thing I was doing. This is 2019, after all. Aren't yes. we just extensions of our phones? That was awesome. That was a beautiful was song. Thanks. Thanks I for letting us play it. it. Yeah. I Thanks for. We were really looking it. forward to doing that, an acoustic version, you know. Good. That's really cool. And as an annual past member of the San Diego Zoo, it totally <laughs> painted a picture for me. And I'm never going to walk past the meerkat exhibit the exactly. same again. <laughs> well, you know, I don't think they, they tell you this or you heard about this, but those meerkats, right? They get out of there and exactly, they see the planes and they scurry down because they think it's a hawk a from predator. hell yes. coming. So every 10 minutes, they're mm -hmm. like, ah! Like, oh. yeah, they sound the call and everybody goes running right, inside. Right. And then, of course, San Diego's, at least was, maybe still is the methamphetamine <laughs> capital of the yeah. world. Something like this. Poor little meerkats on methamphetamine. I'm like, Wait, oh we took it from Salt Lake City? <laughs> what? Was Shit. it Salt Lake? Oh, man. I think every yeah. city is the capital. Yeah. Right? Those Mormons, they really laxed on their crystal meth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, no, yeah. but I. But it's I a love kind of it. a metaphor. I was yeah. gonna say, life. The methamphetamines. I'm gonna say that's like <laughs> wow. the methamphetamines. That's like the El Cajon Zoo. That was the yeah. <laughs> God, that was so good. I want to listen to it again. Hit play Same. again, Big John. That was awesome. I know. <laughs> I know you're right. Here. <laughs> Has that recorded? Is that song recorded yet? Yeah, that was uh, on the last, the previous album. Okay. Introversions that you guys nice. have. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank so you. So, what, I mean, I, I can't understand why anybody would have kind of a qualm with that song. Somebody from the San Diego Zoo coming to you, but like, mm, they don't really want to hear about hoping the planes don't crash and, and methamphetamines. methamphetamines. Yeah. And but it's a reality we all have to live in here in San Diego. Politicians don't want reality. What, haven't you not understood that yet? <laughs> I know. And neither does California, but that's irrelevant. That's but they like the story. melody. You know? I thought you didn't yeah, want to go for it. it's all like. happy and stuff. And well, that's why I said it's a whole other like, story. No, I love it. It's so great. It's so <laughs> carefree, but then there's uh -huh. such like morbidity. Uh -huh. <laughs> like crashing I into the mirror. I Watching them scream. Like past. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. So I, I'm just, I can't wait to go to the zoo. I can't wait to edit <laughs> this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> You've certainly got a journey ahead of you, my friend. Um, I don't envy you at all. Oh, you keep making no. my my job harder. <laughs> <laughs> you see the smile on my face? See? You see that? I know. I see yeah. that. This is how I get to stick it to Big John secretly. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't use that language, that way of wording again. It's okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Um, bottom line, I want to say thank you, Chris. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And both. thank you, Anna. Anna, I've got, I have got probably got both wrong. But <laughs> <All right. laughs> thank you for Thanks, coming out Anna. and being a part of the Dusty Futon, sharing with us your message. I can't wait to see you guys play. I'm definitely right. going to make it out to one of your shows. And this seems like a good one. I'm pretty sure, sure. I got that date open. I'm a pencil in there. March 8th at the Marrow up in, uh, what's that, the North Park slash Hillcrest. Slash right there at University when you right get on the 163. It's right there. Yep. 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 It's a tiny little sign. So make sure you're looking. <laughs> but just use your GPS. The tiny lady in your phone will tell you. Um, <laughs> That's right. Thank you again for coming out here on the Futon. Again, for those listening in, go check out Sluka at a venue near you uh, at sluka.com. That's S-L-U-K-A.com. Also, uh, why don't you go learn how to become a pilot? I know you've been itching to do it. Go check them out at <laughs> ltfsd.com. Learn to fly San Diego. And you may end up getting high with Chris Luke. Ooh.
Anna. <laughs> or Anna. Yeah. Or Anna. Or Anna, one of the two. Are you Anna also an instructor? I am an instructor, yeah. yeah. Wow. Hey, now. That's pretty she cool. She will take you higher. <laughs> 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 nice. So uh, go check them out there. on the, so I'm sure you've got all 11 of your albums out. So you pick your favorite. You've got Emotional Battlefield, Fear of an Ordinary Life, Lost in This World, A Matter of Perception, A San Diego Zoo, which we just heard, Social Anxiety, Songs from the Set List. I love that name, by the way. <laughs> I think it's great. You've got Gothic Cavalier, Solo Flight, Introversions, and the latest and greatest so far, Colorful Radiation, just came out in 2017. They've got it on vinyl. They've got it electronic. Um, so you'll, you'll get to buy not just a record, but also one of his paintings, too. It's a double whammy. <laughs> Go out and get it. That's the cover. <laughs> That's right. So thank you again for coming thank out. Thank you. And thank you guys for listening to the Dusty Futon as well. Big thank you to Christopher and Anna for joining us in Rancho Bernardo on the Futon. Thank you to Tyler Johnson for hosting this episode. Major thank you to Spicy Kim of Wicked Tone Entertainment for hosting and for letting us record in her home studio. I'm Big John, engineer, editor, and producer of this production of the Dusty Futon LLC. Thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe to get all the newest episodes. You can find out how on www.dustyfuton.com. If you love what we are doing and want to support our cause like Nicholas and Rick and our other supporters, please consider going to patreon.com slash the Dusty Futon and pledging to support for as little as $1 a month. Thank you again for listening to this episode of The Dusty Futon. is an unfortunate side effect <laughs> of being a live musician. <laughs> and I've been there before. And uh, without getting into politics, uh, our current president was just elected and it deeply affected me. Yeah. <laughs> not, not in a I healthy way. I think it affected way. a few people. Yeah, I, think I so. noticed a little bit of a so. shift in things. Yeah. You so know, I, did, right I didn't want to do an album about that, yeah. but right. I was affected by it. And mm -hmm. it made me look at society and everything else a little bit differently. And that's where I got these ideas that were driving me nuts. By the and way, so, thank you for just saying it affected me and not being political on my show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, right. I will say this. I get it. People right. respond to this phenomena in a lot of different ways. Right. And we're all human beings. We're all looking mm -hmm. for a better way to make our lives more fulfilling and go in the right direction as we see it. I mean, just look at the whole typical left and right arguments all the time. It's always going to be like that, just like in a court yeah. of law. See, and mm -hmm. that's, that's what, that's what I try to promote is that neutrality, is that that understanding of everybody's different you know, perspective. Because even you, ha you see something one way, somebody else is going to see it a completely different way. And honestly, that's pretty much what this show is about, is showing your way of viewing your music to people who have no idea how you view your music. Bring right. a different perspective around. Not only it. that, but some people may listen to my music and just say, that's just utter crap. I hate it. It just really, really sucks. Oh, yeah, I did. But but I know, exactly. And, my, and quite frankly, most people do. Why am I on your show? I don't know. But Tyler heard it, and he's like, oh, I got to talk to this guy. Yeah. Well, I'm a huge he's Oingo Boingo fan, so I love the weird and the obscure, and I love it. Like, he's all, so he's you're what calling I'm all me about. weird. Um, it's out there. The yeah. Oh, come on. You have right. a Tom Petty hairstyle. <laughs> Tom <laughs> Petty hair? No, no. I'm just lazy and I don't get hair. Yeah. Uh, you're go. not lazy. You shave. <laughs> just around, you know. Yeah. No. Hey, no, no. A bit. Friends don't let friends get haircuts. Okay. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. No. I, I actually. I so you have no friends, is what you're <laughs> yeah. saying. <laughs> I lost them all, and that's what happened. But I, do, I did have long hair like yours, long, luxurious, glorious hair like yours. And uh, I donated it. Uh, I thought I was doing a good thing. And, and like two days later, I was just like, those little kids, man, I want my hair back. No, I'm just kidding. No, it was a good thing, but I still have dreams. It's the weirdest thing. I'll wake oh. up and like, I'll have dreams that I have my hair back and it's awesome. Or I'm oh playing in a band again and then I wake up. I'm like, yeah, no. Oh my gosh, my husband has those same dreams. <laughs>
Yep. He's bald, by the yep. way. Okay. Yeah, before the alopecia <laughs> struck. And I, I have different dreams, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. I think that's a maturity thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to talk about this song if you don't mind. No, so, please, please do. There's so, so much going we're, on. We're talking there. about. Remember, I said it came to me during the last election, and it, it reminds. It, for me, it's that the whole "Make America Great Again" uh-huh. type mm-hmm. slogan thing, yes. just over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. So it's this idea that God's on our side and we're number one, and it got me thinking that this is again what humans do. We're uh-huh. all about our team is number one, or our country is number yeah. one, or our, this is our religion is number one, or uh-huh. whatever it is. It's us and them, and we're better yeah. than you just because we say so. Yeah, and we say it over and over and over again. It's and, the star belly sneech it. syndrome, as it were. Yes. If you're a Susian, if you guys know your Dr. Seuss, anyway. And, uh, <laughs> a Susian. A Susian. A soy. <laughs> The song actually got to number 13 on the rock charts, which is pretty cool. Oh, oh hello. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah. it got started in radio stations in Alabama. What? <laughs> Wait. Yeah. I, I never... think they thought I was being real. You know, like, we are the champions yeah. kind of song, like it's an anthem. And they're thinking, yeah, we're number one. And I'm but, actually making fun of the whole thing. Right. Because <laughs> <That's, laughs> all I do is, uh, I, I just keep it. saying the same thing over yeah. and over in the song. The thing that makes a difference is I keep changing styles. Oh, you but know what it was, though? It was the Crimson Tide. It's their football team. Because they're number one. They're number and one. they absolutely believe that right. 100%. Well, and I'm that's, thinking if people, well, yeah. that's the beauty of music is that yeah. you don't have to... Uh, you, you don't have to sp- explicitly say, and it doesn't have to be what you intended. It's right. how people perceive yeah. it. Yeah. Like that's yes. the, that's what the beauty of artistry is. And like what you said, like I, I thanked you earlier for just saying how it moved you, how it changed you. The what our recent election. Um, you wrote your music in a way that it is perceived by anybody the way they want it to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't. Um, you don't disassociate yourself with anybody by doing that. And that's a perfect example. You wrote this song as a sarcastic, you know, intention, yeah. Yeah. but you Leave know, it open to interpretation. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I'm okay with it. I'm okay with people taking any song and having their own yeah. interpretation of what they think it means. Cause that's yeah. how it is for me. In uh-huh. fact, sometimes I don't like it when I hear an artist say, well, I was thinking this when I did this song. I'm like, really? Cause I thought it was over. Yeah. It was yeah. Something else. Yep. And it kind of kills it for you. I was going to yeah. say it kind of ruins mm-hmm. it for you. Huh? 